Hey, 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 it's a glorious day, boys and girls. Give me my high five, pound out, and church hug. It is so good to be back together with you talking about our absolutely awesome God. That's right, boys and girls, our awesome God. And I am so thankful and grateful for everything our awesome God has done. Why, I am so thankful and grateful for all of the things I have yet to experience our awesome God do. And I am so thankful and grateful that our King, the King of Kings, Jesus, is coming back. <laughs> woo! Turn to and say, woo! I am thankful. Now, before we begin today's message, and I am excited about it, let's see if you remember what we talked about last time together. Hmm. All right, you've been thinking. Do you remember the title of our message series? Remember, this is part two of a message series. Do you remember the title? Can I get a drum roll, please, maestro? The title of our message is Survive or Thrive. Survive or Thrive. That's right. That is the message series. Now, we, as we get closer to the return of Jesus, that's right, as we get closer to the return of Jesus, are things going to get easier or more difficult. Why? They're going to get more difficult. That's right. Making it more difficult to thrive. But see, there is good news, boys and girls, because with Jesus, there's always good news, because even when life gets difficult, when we belong to Jesus, when we have the presence and power of the Holy Spirit living in us, and when we are committed to God's ways and his glory, why, we even in the most difficult times, don't have to just survive. No, we can thrive. That's right. We can thrive. I said, yes, you and I can thrive. Why? Because God's word says so. We unpacked this truth, if you remember, boys and girls. Last week, we learned that God's correction is not his rejection, but a sign of affection. Now, we talked about the truth that every Christian needs God's correction. Is correction always fun? Hmm. No. Is correction always enjoyable? Hmm. No. Will we always understand God's correction? Huh. No, but do we always need God's correction? The answer is yes, we always need God's correction. Now, in order to receive God's correction, we must have faith in him. We must trust his ways. We must put to practice the things he tells us to do, and we must have patience in the process that he has us in. We also learned last week, if you remember, about the importance of making time and room for the Lord, making time and room for God. We must be careful not to fill up our lives with the insignificant things of this world, things like TV and video games and hobbies. And it's not that those things are bad, but if we're not careful, we fill ourselves up with those things, and then we don't leave room for the first thing, the thing that needs to be our number one priority, the things of God, things like reading the Bible and praying, going to church, serving, just spending time with the Lord. Remember our illustration with the cup. When we start with God, he will make room for everything that we need to accomplish his purpose and plans. 
he will make sure that we don't miss out on his instruction and his direction because, remember, instruction and direction are part of God's correction. Instruction and direction are part of God's correction. And we all need God's correction. So that gets us ready, Maestro, for part two of our message series, Survive or Thrive. Survive. Or thrive. Now, if we are going to thrive in life's difficult moments, we're going to learn in our message today, boys and girls, that we must be willing. We must be ready to take the shake. I said take the shake. That's right. Take, say it with me, the shake. Take the shake. No, Maestro, not that kind of shake. Not that shake either. No, 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 and no to that kind of shake. You want to know what, Maestro? Let's go to God's word and let his word explain what kind of shaking we be talking about. Maestro, would you give me Hebrews 12, 26 through 28? Boys and girls, faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. So you are going to say God's word so that you can hear God's word because, boys and girls, it is important that you believe God's word. So let's say it with me. Are you ready? In three, two, one, and at that time, his voice shook the earth. But now he has promised. Yet once more, I will shake not only the earth, but also the heavens and this place. That's Hebrews 12, 26 to 28. Yet once more indicates the removal of things that are shaken. That is things that have been made. That is the verse that we are talking about. And in this verse, we see that God is going to shake everything in heaven and on earth. Shake it. Look at that. Shaking. And notice as it shakes, why it's removing. Because you may say, why does God want to shake everything? Why does he want us to take the shake. Why? 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 Well, I'll tell you why. Because he wants to remove everything that is getting in the way of our pursuit of God. And he wants to get rid of anything that is keeping us from growing in God. Our pursuit of God, our growing in God, anything that's getting in the way that he wants to get rid of and he wants to remove. He wants to shake it. So how does God shake us? Huh, that's a good question. And I'm going to tell you how he shakes us. He allows, boys and girls, trials and tribulations. He allows difficulties. He allows storms to reveal what is inside of us so as to eliminate any unrighteousness as he strengthens us. Now, I've got some Bible verses to help you see this truth, boys and girls. Here we go. Let's go to our first one. It is James 1, 2, and 4. Let's say it together and count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. For you know that the testing of your faith pr produces steadfastness. Let's go to our next verse. This Oh, oh, and let steadfastness have its full effect that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Notice what that verse says about trials and tribulations. They help us. They strengthen us. Next verse. Here we go. 1 Peter 1, 6. Are you ready, boys and girls? In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials. And our last verse, maestro, 2 Corinthians 4, 17. Are you ready? 3, 2, 1. For this light momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. And what that's saying is the momentary, the little thing that we're going to face here, boy, that pales for all of the awesome things that we're going to get later. Now, I have, boys and girls, a 
uh, an illustration to help you see this important spiritual truth. Maestro, do me a favor. Will you get me some music? I got to go get a few items. Here we go. Ready? Go. think we are ready. Thank you, Maestro, now, boys and girls. Notice that I have a little tube here. I got a tube, and I got a tube, or I got a, a, a girl, or I, I've got a boy. I've got a tube. It could be you. It could be me. And here's the deal. We don't really know what's inside of this tube, what's inside of this person, what's inside of us. We can guess, but we don't know. But there is a way to find out exactly what's in us. And that is to allow the weight and the heaviness of life's difficulties, of the trials and tribulations of this world to put pressure on the outside to reveal what's on the inside. All right? So we are going to allow the heaviness of trials and tribulations to reveal what's on the inside. Here we go. Are you ready, boys and girls? Here we go. One, two. What's in there? I don't know. Here we go, Ann. Whoa. That went all over the place. And here's the deal, boys and girls. How we face life's situations, how we face life's difficulties, how we face those things tell us a lot about what's inside of us, how we handle those things, how we handle trials. How do you handle it when things don't go your way? How do you handle it when you don't like what's going on around you? Do you complain? Do you question? Do you get angry with God? Do you walk away from God? No, that's not what we're supposed to do. Or do we trust God, believe God? Do we have faith in God? Do we love God? Do we run to God, embrace God, and hold on to his promises, his purpose, and plans? That is what we're supposed to do. And difficulties allow us to see who we really love and what we really believe. And God uses those to reveal that to us. So here we go. Let me get rid of this maestro. And let's get to our next clip. Maestro, I got a video clip. Here we go. And in this video clip, we are going to see this important spiritual truth. We have a man named Louis Zamperini, and he is going to find himself. It's a true story. He was an, uh, an Olympic athlete who was a prisoner of war in World War II, and he finds himself in a difficult and impossible place. And in this situation, he was going to have to decide what he was going to have, what he was going to do. He was going to have to choose how he was going to respond to life's difficult moments. Here we go, Maestro. Roll the clip. If he drops it, shoot him. Well, I tell you, I love that clip, boys and girls, and the enemy does hate it when we don't give up. But we rise up when we don't give up. But when we rise up, because that's exactly what happened right there. 
there comes a time. God will bring us to a place where we have to decide. We have to choose whether we're going to give up or whether we're going to rise up. God uses those difficult situations and circumstances of this fallen world to shake us, to refine and reveal what is inside of us. Where, boys and girls, do we get the power to rise up? Where do we get the strength to not give up? Where? Who gives us that strength? Who gives us that power? Who is it? Who is it? Well, let's see. Maestro, what does God's word say about that? We got Zechariah 4, 6. Say it with me. Are you ready? Here we go. Then he said to me, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. And our next verse, maestro, here we go. And it's Ephesians 6.10. 6, Are you ready? Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. His might. It is the power of our helper, the Holy Spirit, the presence of God living in us that gives us the strength and the power to never give up and to always rise up. Now, as we get ready to end today's message, let's, we are going to watch a video from Acts chapter 16. And we are going to see... Paul and Silas, and we're going to watch them as they encounter some difficult and unfair circumstances, a shaking, if you will. And as you watch this, I want you to see what they can teach you and me about thriving in difficult moments, how to take the shake, how to rise up. So let's watch the video. Roll it, maestro. The crowd joined in the attack against Paul and Silas. And the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten. they had been severely flogged, they were thrown into prison, and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. Upon receiving such orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open, and everybody's chains came loose. The jailer woke up. And when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, Do not harm yourself! We are all here. The jailer called for lights, rushed in, and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, believe in the Lord Jesus and you'll be saved. <laughs> you and your household. All right, maestro, what time is it? Do you want a revolution? Come on, do you want a revolution? 
All right, here is your preacher question. What things did Paul and Silas do to enable them to thrive, to take the shake, and to rise up in the difficult circumstances, a uh, circumstance that they had to face? Here we go. Give me some thinking music, maestro. All right, what kind of answers did you guys come up with? As I was watching that video, I just couldn't help but think about how Paul and Silas did not allow those difficult situations to keep them from God. No. Let me ask a question. Had Paul and Silas done anything wrong? No. Were Paul and Silas treated fairly? No. Did Paul and Silas get angry with God? No. Did they question God? No. Did they run from God? No. You know what was amazing? That instead of doing all of those things, Paul and Silas, why, they actually turned to God. Well, how? Well, they prayed to God, and they worshiped God, and they even took the time to tell the jailer all about God. Their love for Jesus, their reliance on the Holy Spirit, and their pursuit of their heavenly Father enabled them to thrive no matter what was going on around them, to take the shake and to rise up in life's difficult moments. So let's get ready to pray, and as we do that, we're going to get our hearts ready. Let's, I got a little plant I want you to see. This is the velvet mesquite, and it's a desert shrub and this plant has learned how to thrive in the most difficult conditions places that are so hot and have so little water that other plants they just shrivel up and die but not this plant and here's why the, this plant has roots that run deep deep into the ground 164 feet deep that's an 11 story building deep and it also uses its um, sweet uh, seed pods to help it reproduce in life's difficult moments because it attracts the animals and as the animals eat the seed pods they then utilize the stomach acid once it gets into the animal's stomach to break the seed pod down why well that's because when the animal goes to the bathroom the seed then pop out in its own fertilizer and there, it's able to wait patiently till the rain comes, sometimes for years if necessary. And then when the rain comes, then it's able to establish its own roots that go deep, that help them rise up and thrive in the most harsh of circumstances. So let's get ready to pray. Close your eyes. Hmm. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful that you are sovereign and in control and that sitting at your right hand is our Savior and King, Jesus Christ, and that he is ready when the time is right to return to get all those who are eagerly and anxiously waiting for his second coming. Holy Spirit, give us the strength to rise up, to take the shake. Help us to thrive in the difficult days that are ahead of us, to allow our love for God to run deep to allow the process your process to break us down to prepare us to grow in our faith help us to wait patiently to be ready for your blessings and promises to rain down on us use your correction and the trials and tribulations of this world to prepare us to rule and reign with Jesus forever And all gods, take the shake, people said. All gods, take the shake, people said. Amen. Get it, get it.